kind of a weird thing to report, but uh, Donald Trump's probation interview is set for today. He's going to be having a Zoom meeting with probation officers to discuss possible sentencing guidelines. The former president was convicted last month on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we've heard it. We've heard it. Now, here's where things get interesting. Intervention. Some people are suggesting the Supreme Court could get involved and actually overthrow this, overturn it, while others argue the Supreme Court has zero authority to do such a thing. And that may be the case, maybe not. The other big news is this weird story that came out last week, Friday, where the judge sent both parties in this case a Facebook troll post claiming a family member instructed them that Trump would be found guilty. It seems like a very obvious troll post, yet for some reason, the judge has decided to send the post to both parties. Everyone's trying to figure out why would he, why would he do this? Some say, well, he's trying to make sure that he's protected. I don't know that that makes sense. This looks to be like a random person who posted some random garbled nonsense as a joke, claiming they married their cousin or something. Nonetheless, it could result in a delay in sentencing. It could result and it may actually result in an investigation into the jurors. And there's a potential for a mistrial of some sort. Now, no one knows exactly what this could mean, but the likelihood is that nothing happens. It's a weird troll post. But then the question is that everyone has, why did the judge send it to the defense and the prosecution? Some are suggesting that it indicates the judge knows something about this post. Hmm. Perhaps there's a juror whose last name is Anderson because this person's name on Facebook was Michael Anderson. Maybe there's a juror with that, with that last name. The judge knows it and maybe said this looks like it could be someone who actually is related to one of the jurors. And the juror was discussing the case with them at home. I'm going to tell you this. In my opinion, the likelihood that the jury was discussing this case at home is 100 percent. I just <laughs> that's it. I don't know. What, uh, what else would be happening? So we'll, we'll talk about that. But then we got the bigger news, the political news. Yeah. So it's been a couple of weeks now since Trump was convicted. And guess what? The polls are unmoved. Yeah. Trump's got a few good polls. There's a few bad polls, but in aggregate, mostly unmoved, mostly unmoved. There, there is a, a couple good polls for Trump, but I don't know if it's just static, just noise. But Trump's got one poll that came out after conviction showing he's up six points on Biden. But again, I stress you average them all out. It's there's not really much motion. You know, maybe Biden improved in some areas a little bit. We really don't know. One thing I can say is the best we can say right now, based on polling data, no one cares. No one. Ca you know, what's funny is because you got these stories coming out. And they're saying polls unmoved, showing that the guilty verdict had no impact. No, Trump raised four hundred million dollars. <laughs> That's wild, man. And, and, and some are speculating the reason Judge Mershon sent this letter is because sentencing is going to raise Trump another four hundred million dollars. Dude, When they sentence this guy and they're going to have to. I don't know, man, any sentence they give him is going to result in some, like, he's going to raise so much money, your head will spin. Now, what do they give him? Do they give him uh, house arrest, probation, jail? Maybe probation. Maybe they say something like, okay, look, you're going to get probation, pay a fine. You can still do everything you're doing. That might be their best strategy. But as Brandon Strzok pointed out, why would they stop here? Every step of the way, they've taken it to the highest degree possible. So it's entirely possible that what we actually end up with is they put Trump in prison because they want to see him in a jumpsuit. Well, I can't tell you because I can't see the future, but I can't say this. Let's uh, let's read the story before we do. Head over, my friends, to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member because your membership sustains our work here. If you like the work we do, if you like these shows, become a member to support our work directly. And uh, we would greatly appreciate it. If you're listening on Rumble, we uh, uh, we love Rumble. We don't make the same kind of ad revenue on Rumble, but we want to be there. And so if you are a loyal Rumble viewer, we suggest becoming a member at TimCast.com to support our work. Let's read the news from NBCNews.com. 
Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to sit for a virtual interview on Monday with a New York City probation officer from his home at Mar-a-Lago with his attorney Todd Blanche at his side after he was found guilty, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I love how they just, we get it. You know what I mean? The pre-sentencing probation interview will be done, but uh, I'll, I'll pause. That's the point of the corporate press. They put it in the headline. Trump was found guilty. He was convicted. It's in the title. It's in the subtitle. And it's in the opening paragraph because what their real goal is to say, he's guilty. He's guilty, guilty, guilty. And they want you to read it 800 times instead of just telling us the news. That's why I say blah, blah, blah. All right. So anyway, the pre-sentencing probation interview will be done over a special virtual network with added security measures. Yeah, right. And the interview will be a female. Oh, interesting. According to two sources with knowledge of the situation, the call is not expected to be held over Zoom. It's not. Interesting. Some other outlet said it was Zoom. Trump, the presumptive nominee, was convicted last month. You see, they're doing it again. Yo. Title. Subtitle. Opening paragraph. Third paragraph. Look at this. Then they go on to mention the former president is scheduled to be sentenced for all 34 counts. That's all they're doing. It's very obvious that NBC News is politicking. It's just an arm of the Democratic establishment. I, I don't even know what information and context I can give you other than they just keep saying Trump is, is guilty, 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 guilty. Duncan Levin, a former Manhattan prosecutor turned defense attorney, said the prosecution is likely to ask for jail time. Blanche, Trump's lawyer, will be present to ensure no questions put his client in legal jeopardy. Although the hearing may seem like an unnecessary step due to Trump being one of the most vetted public figures, it is the court's way of judging who he is beyond what came to light during trial. It is unlikely to move the needle because the judge knows so much about his background. Levin pointed uh, to Mershon's gag order against Trump <clears throat> excuse me, after he attacked members of his family. To the extent that an e-felony is punishable by jail, this case, this case screams out for jail time. He has shown no remorse, and he's been held in contempt 10 times. But the judge warned him if he breaks the, gra- the gag order, I will send you to jail. And then he did it again several times, Levin said. And subverting the election process is as serious a records violation as, uh, as has ever come through the New York courts. I don't see why they don't give him jail time. I think that's, that's the way they got to go. Now, Judge Mershon is getting called out for that Facebook letter. We got Jonathan Turley, who says it's a relatively small chance of being real. And I completely agree. Now, you may say to yourselves, but Tim, no one ever accused Judge Mershon of being smart. And I would say, touche, good sir. Touche. Uh, but I, I, I have to imagine there's still some kind of shadow campaign, something be, be behind this that uh, I, I, I don't think it's as simple to say the judge is just dumb. <laughs> it, might, it might be, you know, but I, I don't know for sure. Now, the question about intervention comes to the Supreme Court. Newsweek reports Supreme Court doesn't have the authority to keep Trump out of jail. Attorney. Let's see. The Supreme Court doesn't have the constitutional authority to keep Trump out of jail pending his expected appeal of his guilty verdict in the former president's case. According to Glenn Kirshner, Trump, the presumptive nominee, was found guilty. We know Trump's sentencing will be on July 11th and it remains to be seen what type of punishment Judge Mershon uh, will give him. Meanwhile, Trump has called on the Supreme Court to intervene in the case. In a truth social post from June 2nd, the former president wrote the sentencing for not having done anything wrong will be conveniently for the fascists four days before the Republican National Convention. A radical left Soros backed DA who ran on a platform of I will get Trump. Reporting to an acting local judge appointed by the Democrats, who is highly conflicted, will make a decision which will determine the future of our nation. The United States Supreme Court must decide. He's right. Trump is correct. The idea that we would allow a single state to intervene in a national election this way is cheating. That's it. (laughs) You know, man, I'm just I'm kind of tired of it. I'm kind I kind of I'm kind of tired of the people who cannot see the world around them. You know, what I say is New York is cheating to steal an election from the rest of the country. New York as a singular state, as 150th of this nation, is attempting to lock up the front runner, not just for the GOP, but the presidential race in general, the front runner 
according to all polling and the aggregate and the donations, record breaking because they can't win. The Supreme Court must intervene. Now, they say they don't have the authority. Well, they have a lot of authority. But the question is, does anyone actually care what the Supreme Court thinks or wants to do? Therein lies the big challenge. Look, man, I feel I feel bad for uh, for so many people in this country who really believe in this this country. But don't do anything. Don't do anything to save it. Understand that systems such as ours are not created by God. They are not maintained by divine presence. They are not stitched together by the unseen fabric of strings and string theory or whatever you want to believe. The system in place in this country is held together by the cooperation and agreements of individuals. Now, we've got these big stories, which I'll I'll, I'll get into a little bit later. A pride flag painted on the street and some kids riding around on scooters. Felonies. Meanwhile, a war memorial desecrated and a police officer assaulted trying to protect it. Nothing. Nothing. They tore down statues. Nothing. But you drive a car over a street with a pride flag, jail. You see, my friends, the issue that we are all staring at right now is laws written down don't matter. They never did. What matters is what people believe. Now, the laws being written down matter insofar as there is a legal framework that we try to abide by, and it does inform a generation of what is or isn't acceptable. But right now, many of you may may be thinking to yourself, surely, surely the system will prevail. There's no system. There is no system. It's gone. New York is a singular state. They have decided that they can do this to Trump and none of you, nothing, no one will do anything to stop it. Now, what is to be done? Well, it's quite simple, actually. An AG, secretary of state, a DA, whatever, a a governor from a red state can begin the process of going after Joe Biden for similar things. Criminal charges. I suppose the argument from the Republicans is that they don't want to remove Joe Biden from the race, so they're not going to. But we are at an inflection point in this country. When it came to trying to remove Donald Trump from the ballot in numerous states, the Supreme Court ruled a single state can't. And this is passive. This wasn't the the actual ruling was was more nuanced. But the general idea, a single state can't interfere with a national election like this. It's 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 a federal it's a federal issue. Well, New York's doing it. And, and you know what I love about this is that there are people who are unread and they say things like, but Trump was convicted. It was a jury. The Soviets had juries, too. Yeah. The gulags before you got sent there, you went to a trial. That's how it always works. That's why they're called show trials. But these people believe it. And so they sit there and they say, well, you know, Trump's a convicted felon. Well, I'm sorry, America. But um, the men who came before us, they did not. They did not do the hard work required. And today, unfortunately, we are we are uh, we are facing the same problem. Strong men nowhere to be found. Instead of doing the hard work to maintain the system and enforce what made this country strong, They've abdicated their responsibilities, ignored it. They've done nothing and they have allowed evil to triumph. You can see it now in the Republican Party. You know, we're going to send a strongly worded letter to these people for what they're doing. That'll show them. Strongly worded letters. That'll get the job done, I guess. And, you know, many many others ask, well, what is there to be done? You take a look at what Democrats are doing, and we'd call this extra legal. Right. That means outside of any legal framework, they are engaged in PR smear tactics, manipulation. I mean, this is Soviet level espionage, sabotage stuff happening within our own country from our own intelligence agencies, from a major political party. They are conquering the United States. They are ripping the Constitution to shreds. They are facilitating an invasion on the southern border with smiles on their faces as good men do nothing. Now, what is to be done? I stress this. I stress this. 
Donald Trump is the front runner. The actions they are taking against him are actions of desperation. And that's why Trump must win. There are a lot of people who say stupid things. They say things like the tree of liberty must be watered. No, 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 no. You're wrong. You're wrong. Because we want to preserve a system. And you know what the left and the Democrats are hoping for more than anything? Violence. Because they are hoping and praying for a shot heard around the world moment. Because that will be the end of our constitutional order. It is hanging on by a thread in the hearts and minds of those who believe in this country. And they are hoping you abandon it. They are saying, please, please break the system. Don't do it. Now, I got to be honest. Some people are concerned about false flags. I don't know what you do about that. But I can say to all of you, the strategy is confidence. Over in Europe right now, we are hearing big stories in France. Le Pen, the populist, has won. Macron dissolves the lower parliament. Woo-hoo. We'll talk about that next. Germany, the AFD sweeping a major victory. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible. Confidence is everything. I can't speak for Europe. I can't speak for how these countries should operate. What I can tell you this is the founding fathers resisted at every turn war. You watch the, the Patriot with Mel Gibson, a fictionalized version, but they, and they, and come, they, they, they tried to capture this sentiment in, uh, in, in Mel Gibson's character when they're talking about declaring independence. And he says, do I think we should be uh, free to govern ourselves? Of course. Do I think uh, taxation without representation is unjust? Absolutely. But if you're talking about war with Britain, I say no. And that is how the founding fathers truly felt. And they'd write about the need for independence. They'd write about a lot of things. But understand, the shot heard around the world in the the American Revolution was a year and one month before the Declaration of Independence. That is, the founding fathers did not want to go to war. War was brought to them and they resisted. I love the line in the movie when they're like, what do you propose we do to Mel Gibson? And he's like, we petitioned the crown. And like, we've tried this. Then we do it again and again and again and again. Anything to prevent war. Because mark my words, this battle will, will not be fought on some far off battlefield. It'll be in front of your homes. Your children will learn of it with their own eyes. It's funny because when we talk about civil war and conflict in this country, there are a lot of people who rying on Twitter. <laughs> And for some reason, every single time I talk to like a combat veteran or, you know, private military contractor, they're like, no, you do not understand. You do not want this. So what does that mean? The reason they're trying to lock up Trump is because he's winning because we are winning. Now, there are black pill moments. I know, I know, I know you can't get black pilled culturally, take a look at what's going on. California's collapsing. These big companies are shutting down. Get won't go broke. Everybody's roasting Star Wars. Public Square on the rise. Look at this, man. We are building parallel economy. We are seeing tremendous success in the media. Donald Trump is polling above Joe Biden. He is the front runner. Why? Because our messaging is making it further and further. I think we are looking at a fourth turning moment that I hope does not reach crisis. But enough happens to ignite a fire within the hearts of men in this country to speak up, to stand up and do the work. And that work is having a family, making money, a successful business, registering people to vote, voting, maintaining this system, the parts of it that work and gutting out the corruption. If Donald Trump is to win and he is far from perfect. It may be the first step in reversing course. Now, Donald Trump's first term, I believe, was that, actually. So this would be step two. You see, Donald Trump comes in. He does a moderately weak job, to be completely honest. But the best job I've seen in my life. And it's kind of sad, really. The bar is so low. (laughs) It's funny. I'm talking to Trump supporters, and I'm like, Trump's the greatest president of my lifetime. And they're like, whew, (laughs) it's a low bar. (laughs) It's true. Trump was a net positive. No new wars, withdrawing our troops bringing them home to defend our country, securing our border, building new security fencing and all that stuff, capturing more cartel members and illegal criminal aliens, getting rid of TPP, bringing jobs back. Man, Trump had started to rebuild this country. 
They had to stop him. I look at that and I say, this is what they fear. They fear the people organizing in a true and legitimate fashion. They want to lie to you. They want to say, we're the people. But what they really mean is the party. Their communist crackpot neocom party, whatever you want to call it. I say, a nice little mix of a free market with some government in there. I'm not opposed to government. I just think we got to weed out the corruption. Let Donald Trump come in, get a good Congress, get a good House and Senate. We got the Supreme Court. And let's just clean this mess up peacefully and properly. And that is why they are losing their minds. Because we're winning. What they need now with this sentencing and everything going on is for Trump supporters to act a fool. Don't do it. Trump just raised $400 million. His polling is stable ahead of Joe Biden. Biden is failing. More and more videos. People think he pooped his pants in France. Like, I don't think we got to do much. I think we're going to win. But it doesn't mean the battle's over. It doesn't mean the war is over. Trump getting elected is just the next step. So I got to tell you, they want you riled up. But that fire within you should be a fire for registering your neighbors, your friends, your family. It should be working with the likes of Scott Pressler. Trump's got a uh, swamp the vote, embracing mail-in voting. We need to go at this election full force and then we win. That's the game plan. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all then.